Movie stars in Hollywood's golden age became household names and lived illustrious lives that most of us can only dream of. But they could quickly lose it all if a scandal sullied their reputations. Fortunately for them, it was in the golden age and keeping their personal lives out of the media was much easier than it is today. Welcome to Do You Remember? I'm your host, Nostalgic Nick. Today we're discussing the biggest jerks in the history of Tinsel Town. Sure, everyone has difficulties at work, but some film heroes commit villainous acts behind the scenes. In fact, some of their actions were so heinous that they could end their careers if they happened today. Before we learn about these antisocial celebs of yesteryear, please hit that thumbs up icon to show support. And subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new video. Now, no more jerking you around. Let's go find out about the jerks. Milton Burl. Now, Milton Burl had a reputation as an unapologetic joke thief, even earning the nickname the Thief of Bad Gags. RuPaul even called him out at the 1993 MTV Video Music Awards. The two got along poorly on camera and off, and what should have been a torch passing got awkward when RuPaul went off script. Still got it, Uncle Milty. Oh, you're hot. Oh, ah, just, oh. Uh, uh, uh. RuPaul ended his professional relationship with MTV shortly after the incident. Uncle Milty also earned a lifetime ban from hosting NBC's Saturday Night Live when he guest hosted in 1979. Burl attempted to take control of the entire show during rehearsals. He upstaged his fellow cast members and recycled old comedy bits. Lauren Michaels has tried to keep the show from being rerun, but copies of the show resurfaced in 2003. Charlie Chaplin Sir Charles Chaplin's films were silent, but he certainly wasn't if the cast or crew didn't work up to his standards. He was well known as a perfectionist who would fly off the handle and fire crew members at the drop of a bowler hat. Chaplin was married four times to women many years his junior. His first wife was 17 on their wedding day, and his second was 16. Oh gosh. At 54 years old, Chaplin married 18-year-old Una O'Neill, daughter of famous playwright Eugene O'Neill. Una's father disowned her, but the couple remained married until Chaplin's death. He was, however, a reportedly abusive husband to all of his wives, and he had no qualms about sleeping with other women. Lucille Ball Now who doesn't love Lucy? I mean, I do. The woman broke a lot of new ground for what could be aired on TV and revolutionized the modern sitcom. However, she was very demanding behind the scenes. The great Tony Randall claimed that Lucy, quote, bossed everybody around and didn't spare anybody's feelings. Richard Burton called Lucy a monster of staggering charmlessness and monumental lack of humor, and said if he had been drinking, he might have killed her. Errol Flynn. I don't know what it is about me, but uh, I just don't seem to be able to keep out of fights. Charles Hyams' 1980 biography, Errol Flynn, The Untold Story, made shocking allegations about the iconic swashbuckler. In addition to claiming that Flynn had multiple same-sex affairs, Hyam accused him of being a Nazi sympathizer. However, his claims were based purely on circumstantial evidence and subsequently debunked in later biographies. And certainly you know the expression, in like Flynn, but do you know where it comes from? It was inspired by three separate statutory rape trials in 1942. He was acquitted each time, but the damage done to his reputation was finished. His lifestyle choices also took a toll on his good looks, and he mostly played aging alcoholics later in his career. When Flynn died of a heart attack in 1959 at just 50 years old, the medical examiner said he had the body of an 85-year-old man. Bing Crosby Bing's oldest son Gary authored the 1983 tell-all biography, Going My Own Way, claiming the crooner handled most disciplinary issues with a stern lecture and a studded leather belt. Gary Crosby was also punished when his brothers acted up and the discipline didn't stop at spankings. Housekeepers allegedly gave the children the drowning treatment in the bathtub if they heard them talking in bed or if they woke up too early. Two of Crosby's kids suffered from depression and eventually committed suicide. 
Despite doing seven road movies together, Bing and his co-star Bob Hope were not friends. Bob Hope once told a friend he simply didn't like Bing and at times detested him. Gene Kelly when dancer Sid Charisse came home from the MGM lot covered in bruises, her husband just assumed she must have been working with Gene Kelly that day. But Gene Kelly may have done something far worse than being too rough with his co-stars. In 1970, he reportedly donated to the Provisional Irish Republican Army. He met covertly with IRA leader Cathal Goulding during an underground fundraising mission in the USA and gave him a check for 20,000 pounds. Kelly reportedly told Goulding, this money is for guns, I certainly don't want it going to any do-gooders. Jean's widow Patricia Ward Kelly disputes these allegations which surfaced after his death. She claimed her late husband was proud of his Irish heritage but he didn't have much money and wasn't a violent man. John Wayne. We're being represented by men who are kowtowing to minorities where they can get votes. The Duke was known for his ultra-conservative views, but many people don't know that he did refer to himself as both a socialist and a liberal early in his career. John Wayne supported Barry Goldwater for president in 1964 after the Arizona senator voted against the Civil Rights Act, and he made his most controversial remarks in May of 1971 in an issue of Playboy. John Wayne said he believed in white supremacy and didn't support African Americans holding office until they could be, quote, educated to a point of responsibility, end quote, and end of respect, honestly. Wayne also publicly denounced homosexuality and considered suddenly last summer too disgusting even for discussion and claimed that Midnight Cowboy was perverse. Surprisingly, Wayne befriended Rock Hudson when they co-starred in The Undefeated, and they remained good friends until John Wayne died in 1979. Today, some film students walk out of classes when John Wayne's movies are screened, and Democratic leaders want to remove his name from the Orange County Airport. The Duke even got dissed by Public Enemy in the 1989 hit Fight the Power. Betty Davis to quote songwriter Kim Carnes, screen goddess Betty Davis was ferocious and she knows just what it takes to make a pro blush. Producer William Fry told Vanity Fair about once having dinner with Davis and director Herschel Daugherty. Herschel made the mistake of whacking his finger in her face and she responded with a verbal tirade, clearing out half the restaurant. Davis then returned to her dinner and acted as if nothing had happened. Film set lighting gets pretty intense, and Betty Davis often rinsed her legendary eyes between scenes. And once during the filming of Mr. Skeffington, someone entered her dressing room and poisoned her eyewash. The culprit was never found, and director Vincent Sherman reportedly told detectives, quote, If you want to line up the cast and crew and ask them, okay, which one of you wanted to kill Betty Davis? A hundred people would raise their hands. Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford would have pushed her way to the front of the line and raised her hand as high as Lady Liberty. Her backstage battle with Betty Davis during the production of Whatever Happened to Baby Jane was even dramatized in the 2017 miniseries Feud. Davis did everything she could to get Crawford fired from the picture, but she was unsuccessful. When Davis was nominated for an Academy Award and Crawford wasn't, all hell predictably broke loose. Joan got herself booked to present the Best Director Award and sabotaged her own movie by actively campaigning against her arch nemesis. The Oscar went to Anne Bancroft for The Miracle Worker in 1963, and Joan Crawford accepted the trophy on her behalf. No wire hangers ever! The 1978 tell-all Mommy Dearest was Christina Crawford's response to a lifetime of abuse. So two of Crawford's other kids claimed they were not abused and several of her personal friends came to her defense. But Joan's alcoholism, jealousy, and obsessive cleaning habits were very well known throughout Hollywood. Crawford allegedly had a one-night stand with Marilyn Monroe and was named the other woman in at least two divorces. Christina Crawford spent most of her childhood in boarding schools and claims that her mother adopted kids merely as a publicity stunt. 
Crawford wasn't married and illegally adopted her children through back channels. One birth mother even arrived to reclaim her child days after Crawford brought it home. Joan Crawford left behind a $2 million estate when she died in 1977, and two of her adopted children inherited $77,500 each, while Christina and her brother Christopher were wholly excluded from the will. Mickey Rooney Mickey Rooney was married eight times and boasted about having countless extramarital affairs in his tell-all autobiography, Life is Too Short. MGM studio head Louis B. Mayer reprimanded Rooney in 1938 for having a torrid affair with Norma Shearer, simply because it caused problems during the production of Marie Antoinette. Mickey also claims that he took his first trip to a bordello with his mentor Milton Berle and witnessed Tallulah Bankhead engaging in a lesbian encounter. And if that wasn't enough, Rooney also outed his close friend Judy Garland for having a brief affair with a woman and described his first wife Ava Gardner's private parts in explicit detail. Hollywood journalist Craig Bennett makes even more shocking allegations in his 2019 book, True Confessions of a Shameless Gossip. Bennett characterizes the actor as abrasive, nasty, curt, and rude, and claims that Rooney's lengthy list of sexual conquests includes betting a 14-year-old Elizabeth Taylor on the set of National Velvet when he was 24. Bennett also claims Rooney almost wore out the casting couch, auditioning young actresses for roles that did not exist. If it's any consolation, it is widely believed that many of Rooney's claims were either exaggerated or completely false, but I'm sure there's some truth in there. The cinema is where ordinary people go to escape for a few hours, and we've idolized movie stars for over a century. There are people we want to be and people we want to be with, but we do need to remember what happens behind the scenes can often be more shocking than what makes it onto it. What do you think? Do movie stars owe it to their fans to be role models? Or should we just enjoy their films and mind our own business? Does this change the way you feel about any of these screen legends? Did you already know about any of this dirty laundry? Get in the comments and tell us all your thoughts. And before you depart, please give this video a thumbs up to show support. Subscribe to our channel for more content like this. But from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching.